Hey everyone, I was just thinking, you know, what I should do again is a response video. So today I'm responding to The Green Ghost on this video, Is Capitalism Coercive? And I haven't interacted with The Green Ghost before. Hello, Green Ghost. Um, I believe he's an anarcho-capitalist or something of that ilk. Um, and he was talking in his video about uh, whether capitalism is, uh, is coercive, coming to the conclusion it's not. And he used an example where a guy decides to live in a hut in the forest and he's got actually a good degree so he could go back to society, get a good job, but he chooses not to. So is capitalism being coercive by not giving him money and goods and services? Uh, so to start off with, obviously left libertarians like myself um, don't necessarily or generally don't really believe that we should just let people work or not work at their leisure. Uh, I think most of us has com have come to accept that we haven't found any way to actually um, run a society without any means of coercion. But we want to limit that coercion and uh, money is a form of coercion, whether capitalist anarchists want to accept that or not. Um, so, because money is tied to both the way you live, so it's being coercive in threatening your status in society and your lifestyle, but it's also at the very core, um, contributes to your existential minimum, food, clothing, a house. So without it, you can't exist. So um, it does put a lot of pressure on you. And just saying, oh, because you have a choice, that means it's not coercive, um, that doesn't work. I mean, if someone says, either do this or I shoot you in the head, Obviously, you still have a choice. You can just not do it and get shot in the head, but then you'll be dead. It was still a coercive choice, just like um, being forced to work so you can get money, so you can exist um, or exist to a certain standard, which doesn't make you miserable, is in fact coercive. Now, you can argue whether that's a fair kind of level of coerciveness, coerc sorry, coerciveness or not. Um, so. As I said, I believe there is good reason for um, putting some pressure, some coercion on people to work. Otherwise, we do have free riders um, in any kind of social system. But I would be honest enough to admit that it is a form of coercion. And anarcho-capitalists usually don't seem to want to do that because with their non-violence principle, um, they always uh, put forth this idea that everything they do is not coercive. Whereas... A lot of the things plainly are coercive. Um, it, coercion doesn't isn't just restricted to holding guns to people's heads. Um, and just like this example with the gun shows, you still have a free choice. Just because you have a free choice uh, to either uh, suffer in some way or do what your um, higher ups tell you doesn't mean you're not being coerced. Um, and to me, this always winds up as kind of a love it or leave it situation, which I believe is always a kind of unfair uh, thing to put to someone because when you're in society, you've got all of your friends here, you've got your life here, uh, and people value security and things like that. So it's unfair to just say, well, if you don't like the way you're being treated, then just get out, go to the forest. Uh, and it's just as ridiculous as when people say, I don't like the fact that the U.S. is declaring war on everyone. Well, then get out. Move to some other country. Why don't you go to Sweden? Um, this love it or leave it mentality isn't isn't really something that I that I accept as fair. And this moving to the forest seems to be part of that. Um, so I mean, one thing. This is the thing for me. Um, libertarians of all ilks, whether they be right or left, are concerned about the rights of individuals. Right. That's uh, that is what. Uh, right-wing libertarians and anarcho-capitalists put as their highest virtue, the rights and freedoms of the individual, the individual above everything else. Yet, by actually putting them into society and then basically putting this love-it-or-leave-it pressure uh, and potentially having some individual's rights violated, so you could imagine this guy is actually, let's say, has purple skin color, just like 5% of the society, and the remaining 95% have green skin color. And they tell all the purple people, either you work for, for two bucks cleaning my floor, or you get out and go to the forest. 
um, in a system where it's just well, if you make that choice, then it's then it's ethically acceptable. Um, the the purple guy can't complain. He's now living in the forest. He's got a doctorate, um, but his choice is to either clean people's boots or to live in the forest. No, my idea as a left libertarian is that people have individual rights which are independent of any kind of system. If a system like, say, capitalism violates people's right to exist with a certain dignity, then we need to address that. And I always find it surprising that um, right-wing libertarians often seem to seem to suggest that if people do actually wind up in this situation, and the example of the purple guy, he's obviously not being treated fairly, um, then that's somehow okay because they made that choice freely. Um, and they want to deny that that's actually a violation of his rights, whereas to me that's a fairly clear case. Um, so anyways, I'd love to hear what you think about it, uh, Green Ghost, and anyone else who's watching. I'll see you guys all later. Have an excellent weekend.